Hey everyone, this is the second video and this is the continuation from the first compiler basic um, that we t learned about. And what I'm going to do is going to make an executable program from the things that we have learned from the previous video, from the video one. So what we have added here from the video one, if you remember, was the box bracket. This was the left block bracket and we told that return uh, left box bracket and then close that and then we have obviously the right uh, box bracket so when we do this we return return right box bracket and so on and so forth now what you need to do in this video we're going to make one more addition to this is to increase our number of tokens by adding another set of parentheses which is a curly parentheses because these are all types of parentheses different parentheses that a user might be able to enter and say if you weren't to include this parentheses the curly ones if the user would be um, input it would be using uh, input as curly parentheses a non NPC would be the result all right so this is why we need to add and be precise as much as we could be in order to define the tokens so that our grammar understands what the tokens we are talking about all right so what we now do is a return uh, left curly parentheses LCP say that and then you can do this in any order you don't have to go from right you can also go from the right CP right curly brackets and so on and so forth so I'm just gonna save this so this file is saved and then from here what we need to do is only two tokens have been identified and the third one being the NPC so here you can see that we have only used uh, more than two uh, left parentheses right parentheses but here we have introduced one two three and four more parentheses so what we are going to do is that we have told the lexical analysis that we have been introducing this number of sets of tokens this many sets of tokens now we need to tell our yacc that hey make sure you get the whole sets of tokens that have been introduced in your lexical analysis how do we do that now it's a simple procedure we just go percentage token and write down all the tokens that we have not yet been introduced so that includes lbp token rbp token uh, our lcp token and uh, RC, uh, LCP RCP all right now uh, there's a, one more addition to this so here we have introduced that hey the sets of tokens that the lexical analysis is using is the sets of tokens that have been introduced now we come to the grammar part the grammar part is important because the Analysis, uh, analysis says that if the grammar is incorrect and it's not correlational to the sets of token introduced then it might be generating an error how do we make sure that all the sets are being used so here as an example it says lp term rp which basically means that whenever we are using a sets of parentheses we always start with the left parentheses and then we can have a term inside it could be a numerical or a digit like this and then once this is over it could have a right parenthesis in the end so this is exactly what the content has to mean now because we have many many sets of tokens and not just lp and rp what we are going to do is add on to the content so how do we do that we do that by using um, LBP because we can use left box bracket and then a user can put in term and then it could have RBP another way is using LCP which is the curly brackets and then could have term RCP all right 
And then I'm just going to leave the term as term because a user can enter 9 as a number without using any sets of parentheses. All right. So what I'm going to do now is save it. Now that we have saved the file, our files can look more like this. So our lexical file may look like something like this, what we have added it. And our YACC file can be looking like this. Now what I've done in this, in addition to what I've shown you before, is added a printf rule. So if a user enters a left parenthesis, a term, and a right parenthesis, I can say, hey, the user is using the rule number one. If the user is just trying to print out the left and right parentheses, we can say that, hey, it works, but the values are missing, and so on and so forth. However, when the user tries to enter a left parentheses term left bracket or something like that in a sort of manner that is cross match and that is not allowed, which may give us syntax error. So before the syntax error is printed, we want to let the user notify that, hey, syntax error missed, there is a mismatch in parentheses. So this all different kind of combinations, we can go ahead and uh, identify an input in our grammar. Once we are done with that, the way we run it is because it's something like this. You open your Ubuntu, you go in CD desktop, CD compiler, and then you're uh, left with something like this. Now what you want to do is type in the file name which in this case is a matcher so what I want to do is point slash matcher once this is done we are shown to the next line and here the user is want the computer is required for the user to put an input so for an input to test our logic and parentheses that we have added in the grammar we can use something like this First, let's just go ahead and solve an easy example, which is just using of left and right parentheses. So it does say work, missing values. And if everything works out, it checks out the result should be zero. In order to get the result to zero, we have to press control D. All right. Now let's go ahead and test different uh, operations. So what you want to do, you can go ahead and type in dot slash matcher again, if you want, or you can use the up arrow. Once you use that, you can press enter. And then you can have a complicated expression, something that goes like this. So you have something like this in this, then curly brackets three. And then you can have a box bracket. And then you can have 12 in that. And then close it by using a proper set of parentheses. In this, the result is zero. However, whenever we use a different operations and different op parentheses, we know that the diff, the compiler is telling us the different rules that we have been using. So in this, we have implemented rule number two before we're implementing rule number three. And in this, what happens is that rule number two and three are implemented in rule number one. As you can see in our grammar file, we have added rule number one as left parentheses and right parentheses. So you can see that left and right parentheses are used inside and rule number two and three are used inside the rule number one so hence it does make sense all right let's go ahead and try one more example to sort it out all right the next example we'll start with the box bracket phi in it curly bracket 67 and then nine and end it with a closed block um the right box bracket once we're done we know that it's using rule number two once rule number two is done, we also know that rule number three is also applicable. Notice how it did not mention the rule number one here. That the reason is we have not been using any kind of open parentheses, the left or right parentheses over here in this example. This is the reason why we have not been, uh, the computer is not showing us any kind of symbolism, why we are not using any rules that we have not been implemented. All right. 